Hey, what is up, everybody? Before I continue with this video, you probably are all confused because it actually says that it's my 900th video, and normally when I do a 100th video, if you will, like the 900th, the 800th, all that stuff, I uh, go do like some sort of special video about it, but I just want to say that uh, this actually isn't my 900th video. I know it says I have 900 videos up on YouTube, However, I um, have a video on here that's unlisted, that isn't exactly finished yet, um, that, that I'm, that's in the works, and that video isn't included in my um, video series, in my YouTube videos yet, so this is actually my 899th video. I always subtract by one because I'm not actually there yet. I just have to do this video, and then I'm going to do the next one. Um, now you... Uh, this video is late as hell, probably a couple of days late. It's the um, Tough Enough Review, Season 6, Episode 4. Um, and I'm going to review this, you know, episode. But I haven't really been able to do this review because uh, I uh, Tuesday and Wednesday I pretty much worked. And I was tired as hell, so I was too tired to sit down and watch this all and review it. And then we had a uh, pipe burst, so we had to deal with that. So I'm finally getting a chance now to sit down, watch Tough Enough, give a review, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, this episode could be pretty cool. Um, I just kind of want to give a little bit of a Tough Enough rant because I said in the last video that something wasn't clicking with me with Tough Enough. And I was going to talk about it on the handout that I did with James the He-Man Hebert. He has two other YouTube channels. Up there was uh, his James Hebert's channel, James Hebert Side 95, where he makes custom Titan Tron to wrestlers. Down there was his Wayne with Youth Wrestling channel that I've appeared in a couple of times, and he's making a comeback with that in the fall. Well, actually, he said he was doing it this summer, and I'm going to be an appearing in some videos in the fall, so that's something to look forward to. Um, so, um, yeah. But uh, I was going to talk about it then, but he didn't, want to, he, he didn't really want to talk about it, but I... Figured it out. I talked about it on the phone with my friend, la I believe, last week. And, um, I want to, uh, you know, kind of, uh, touch up on it now. So, the problem is with Tough Enough, um, this season is it's really different, um, this time around. Like, there was, when I watched it in 2011, there were no judges. There were trainers, actually, but there were no judges. I felt like it was different in 2011. I felt like it was better, maybe because Stone Cold Steve Austin was the host of that show. And I loved watching the, him host it and trash the Tough Enough contestants but and make them better. I thought he was a better host. Um, and that's the problem with the host situation. They have Chris Jericho as the host. And he doesn't do anything because they have the judges, so they decide who goes home. The fan, We as fans decide who goes home, which I'm not even exactly sure if that's true because, you know... The fact of the matter is, um, the reason why I'm not sure if it's true is because WWE likes to make polls. So, and but Chris, the host doesn't do anything. You have, Chris Jericho will be on it like a couple of minutes, and then that's it. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't decide to go home. He doesn't do anything at all. He hasn't done nothing, and that's the problem with this. I feel like that Stone Cold Steve Austin was off with the chance to be the host, but he didn't want to because he saw he wasn't going to be able to do anything because the judges just do everything, the trainers do everything, the host does nothing. You could have just made, you could have just made Renee Young the host because she's really in, really in it as well. Why not just make Renee Young the host? Um, and, uh, you know, but yeah, the host does nothing. Doesn't do jack shit. Um, and maybe Chris, maybe Chris Jericho will do more as the season goes on, but we're just going to have to wait and see with that. Um, another problem I have with this is some of the is the judges. You see, the judges, I don't have a problem with Hulk Hogan. I don't have a problem with Paige. The judge I have a problem with is Daniel Bryan. Um, Daniel Bryan is being too nice. Now... It would be one thing if he actually was that nice. Daniel Bryan's a nice guy in real life. But I feel like when it comes to wrestling, I feel like he would be more aggressive. Daniel Bryan, I hear, has trained some wrestlers. Um, 
I feel like Daniel Bryan would be more aggressive he, since his, this is his passion. He's being way too nice, um, and that's my problem with that. Another problem is, is this is exactly like American Idol, and I'm not a huge fan of that. So now I have, so that's my problem with that. Um, what else do I have a problem with? Um, yeah, just kind of about it, you know. Um, I just feel like if this show could have been a little bit better, maybe ha maybe the judges could have been better. Imagine these guys for judges: Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Paul Heyman. Those would be awesome judges. And then you could still have Chris Jericho be the host um, and actually have him do stuff. And then the trainers can still be Booker T, Lita, and uh, Billy Gunn. That's how I feel. But, uh, yeah, that's my little bit of rant with Tough Enough. And that's my problems with Tough Enough. I still am enjoying this show somewhat. But, um, you know, I'm going to have to wait and see. But, yeah, let's start the review. Okay, so this episode is called One Man Show. And, um, yeah, so it starts off with the host, well, the co-host, Chris Jericho and Renee Young. Then it gets the judges, Daniel Bryan, Hulk Hogan, and Paige. Um, and, uh, Daniel Bryan says that every time he votes somebody in the bottom three, they end up getting eliminated, so he hopes that doesn't happen this time. And Paige is like, I wish that could happen to me. And he says that he... She hopes, she doesn't say who it is, but she hopes a certain someone steps it up and, um, um, you know, show, proves that she still belongs to be here with her and to Sarah Lee. And Hulk Hogan says that, uh, he, everybody impressed him this week, but he, know, but he, he knows who he wants to put in the bottom three. Um, and then, uh, it cuts back, uh, to the barracks or the house, I like to call it. And we meet this new girl, Chelsea Green. And, um, she's back on Tough Enough. She was one of the, uh, final 14, um, to get there, but they could only pick 13. But since Diana quit, she was able to come back. And she sets up, She we find out she's 24 years old, and she's been training for two years to get to the WWE. And, um, yeah, I thought that was good. Um, and, uh, everybody gets back, meets her. And then Amanda and Gabby get into it. Gabby keeps talking about how Ma Amanda's fake. How she has her fake boobs and she has problems with them. Diana even says that you're just being a bitch. I've beaten you in all the competitions. And um, something else. I don't remember what else. And um, yeah, they get into it. And then it cuts back to the WWE Performance Center. Which is one thing I do like about Tough Enough. I love to see the WWE Performance Center. That's really cool. With the, with the trainers, Billy Gunn, Lita, and Booker T. And they talk about how you have to learn to cut good promos to connect with the crowd. Which is true. Because if you can't... Which, well, actually, it isn't always true. Because there's some people that just can't really cut promos. But, you know, can still connect with the crowd. Like, Bret Hart wasn't the best on the promo cutter. Neither was um, Bob Backlund. So it isn't always true. But it's somewhat true. Um, some people just aren't good talkers, like, in general, they aren't, like, good talkers. Um, but, it, it plays this video, they play the video package of everybody cutting promos, it's on Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Chris Jericho, and The Rock. They completely left, and King Barrett, they showed him, but they completely left out Dusty Rhodes and Paul fucking Heyman. Dude, Paul Heyman shouldn't have given a lesson in this, just... If you want to know how to cut a good promo, watch the podcast that Paul Heyman did with Stone Cold Steve Austin. He just tells you all about it. Like, Ken Barrett's given the lesson of all people. Like, Ken Barrett's good on the microphone. But if I'm going to learn from someone, I'm going to learn from Paul fucking Heyman. Because Paul Heyman can cut a good promo. Um, but, I, you know, I digress. So, um, Ken Barrett talks about how you have to learn to put your promo that fits your character. Um... And Ken Barrett cuts this great promo, talking about how I'm st just trying to teach them how um, they how, how the con to teach the contestants um, how to do it. And he cuts this promo on Billy Gunn and Booker T, saying that we have three Ken of the Wind winners in here. They were all great Ken of the Winds in their time, but that was in the past. And now I, I and now and, but I'm afraid I got some bad news. Your reign of terror came to an end a long time ago, and my reign of terror is going to continue. Boom. 
I thought that was awesome. This made me really want to see a Ken Barrett and Booker T feud. It really did. Um, so then it shows all the contestants cutting promos on, um, you know, um, the judge on the Ken Barrett talking about why they should be the king or queen of the win. And if I was one of the contestants, I'm sorry, but I say I don't want to be the king of the win because then I'll get put on a losing streak like you are. I totally would have said that. Um, maybe a kind of promo saying that if I become king of the win, I'm not going to be a complete loser like you, something like that. Because um, he could possibly lose his kid. He probably won't even be the king of the win. He possibly might not even be the king of the win after Battleground, after Our Truth beats him. I don't want that to happen, but the WWE might book it that way. Um, and Matta did a good job. Patrick did a good job. He gives some advice, and Matta did the best job that he said. And that was the end of Ken Barrett. I thought he had a good role on the show. And uh, then they do a um, an improv. They're at an improv session. Um, and uh, Chris Jericho comes up. And um, it actually isn't going to be an improv session. The contestants are going to cut promos on each other. Two contestants are going to get on the stage and cut promos on each other. And I guess whoever the crowd votes as a crowd favorite wins. So it starts off with... Um, Try to remember who it kicks off with. I'm just going to kind of talk about it all at once. Patrick and Josh get... No, Patrick and Tanner get into it. Tanner cuts a lame promo. Um, it was just kind of bland. Patrick was really good. He talked about how you have to have passion for the business. You have to know who the wrestlers are. Everybody's wearing Cactus Jack t-shirts. And I know you don't know who Mick Foley is. Or Rowdy Roddy Piper. But you have to know who they are. Because normally people from the MMA, unless you're Brock Lesnar, don't succeed in the WWE. I thought he cut an amazing promo, um, and he was voted the crowd favorite. Matta and T Josh get into it. Josh's English action still kind of sucked. It gets it, it, it isn't bad, but it's just not great. And Matta cut a pretty intense promo on him. He was voted the crowd favorite. Um, then um, Gabby and Amanda cut promos on each other. Amanda, no, no, Gabby was really bland. I don't really think she understood understood really what a promo was, that's what the contestant said, and she really didn't, and Amanda just goes off on her, calls her a bitch, says she's beating her in all the competitions, she asks where the intensity is, where's the passion, and uh, Amanda wins that, and who else, um, uh, I'm trying to remember who else was, it? Chelsea and somebody, and Georgia, and Chelsea cuts a really bland promo. Um, it's just so bland. She just talks about what all the tools you need to become a deep, a woman or a diva in the WWE. And then, uh, Georgia fires back, says that she, there's a reason they call her GG. She gets voted the crowd favorite. And then Sarah Lee and ZZ cut promos on each other. I believe this was the last one. And Sarah Lee cut, says that she has a problem with ZZ and it doesn't really get into it. And then ZZ says that you're just too nice if a mosquito float too far near you. Uh, too, too fast for you, it would put you down. Um, and then Chris Jericho cut, comes up and says that, um, you guys, um, ZZ, you have the personality, you just need to find, you just need to, you know, kind of find what personality works for you. And then he cuts a great promo on Chris Jericho, asks, why are you still here? You're too nice, you're not really trying. I and mean, Sarah Lee says, well, I belong here, I'm still here. And Chris Jericho just pretty much wants you to become me. He says, enough of this shit. I've been here. I've been doing this for a long time now. And I don't see that intensity in you. I want to see that meanness. I want to see you get mean. He says, because he, he's even trashing her. And um, Sarah Lee says that he she will. So uh, Paige gets pissed about this, saying that she's not even tr trying. Um, and Cole Hogan says that she is trying. And Paige just doesn't think she belongs here. Paige is pretty pissed about this. I actually really enjoyed this uh, half of the episode. I thought it was actually pretty good. Uh, Chris Jericho finally did something. That was good. I liked Ken Barrett's stuff. I liked the promo stuff that they were cutting on each other. Some were good, some were bad. So I, I actually enjoyed this part of the episode. Okay, so uh, next, um, it cuts back to uh, the improv place. And the fans get to vote out of the winners, out of Matta, Patrick, uh, Amanda, 
and Georgia, and I think that my, and uh, ZZ, who like cut the best promo, and the fans vote Patrick, which I agree, I think he did the best. Maddie did pretty good. They were, but you know, Patrick did did the best. And for the girl, they picked. Uh, I don't remember who they picked for the girl. Actually, I <laughs> uh, I really don't. Um, it, it might have been Amanda. Might have been. I don't know. Then, um, Maddo and Patrick get into an argument because Maddo feels like he just used the fans to help him become a, a great promo. He didn't actually use a character, so they get into it. Uh, Maddo and Tanner, they st you know, Maddo and Patrick first get into it, and then Tanner throws his drink at Patrick's face, and then Patrick starts throwing food and stuff at him. And he tests this thing saying that you, know, you guys just blew it. You guys blew it. You guys and uh, you you guys may be big guys, but this isn't the 1980s anymore. Ultimate Warrior is dead, and Hulk Hogan's retired, which I think is going to get him in trouble because Hulk Hogan's one of the judges. Um, and he says this is about the small guy outworking the big guy, and if we got in the win, I could outwork you any day of the week. Because uh, they keep calling him a small guy, and then everyone just kind of separates and walks off. Uh, and I thought that was pretty cool. I like this here. Uh, like I said, it's a reality show. You have to expect some drama, and I actually did like this drama because he made Patrick made a lot of sense. Then, the all the women, I was shocked. You know what I hate about shows to be on a tough enough. By the way, they spoiled that bad um, on Wall Monday night because when Lita brought out all the contestants, Chelsea was one of them. So, um, and uh, yeah, uh, they just talk about how Gabby has this personality in the house. But she didn't win it when she had to do the challenges, when she had to cut the promos. She just hasn't been stepping it up. Amanda keeps talking about how she beats her in the challenges. She says that all the time. She, I feel like she's just gloated at that point. Because she every time Gabby comes up to her, she just says, Hey, I beat you in all the challenges. You know. And um, Gabby and Sarah Lee's upset. She has a reason to be upset. Because the, the judges and Chris Jericho... Are giving her shit for not stepping it up, and Gabby's not doing the same thing, and she's not being given shit for it. And they feel like that Gabby somehow has avoided the bottom three. I thought this was good here. Then Tanner is pretty much flirting with Chelsea, um, just kind of talks to her because it didn't work with Sarah Lee, so he moved on to the next girl. What a player he is, um, I guess. And it, um, Chelsea uh, offers to teach him how to wrestle. And Tanner even knows that he's playing her because they go for a hug and he just kisses her because it was like a, the oldest trick in the book. I didn't really think this looked very smooth. Um, it did look a little awkward. The G Hogan and Paige even said the same thing. And Daniel Bryan, you know, was talking about it. But I have a question about these fans that are in the audience. They get to get in for free, right? Because uh, I don't see them buying tickets to go to this. I wouldn't even go to this thing because you pretty much could just better off watching it at home because the, most of the stuff takes place on the Titan Tron. Like, what the fuck do the fans do? And then you get to see occasionally Hulk Hogan, Paige, and Daniel Bryan. The only reason I go to, I would go to this thing was to see Hulk Hogan, Daniel Bryan, Paige, and Chris Jericho and get, try to get their autographs. Maybe a picture with them. picture with Paige, definitely. Daniel Bryan and Hogan would be cool, and uh, it would be cool to get be, get a picture with Chris Jericho. And when they went to the improv thing, I don't think they went for tough enough. They probably went to meet Chris Jericho, which makes sense. But I thought this was pretty good stuff. You, know, I, I enjoyed this stuff, and it was fine with me. Okay, so next, um, the contestants have to learn how to do body slams and a shoulder tackle, because they have to pick them up a certain way, and they teach them how to do that. This was bad. Um, I'm not talking about this segment, but Sarah Lee was bad. She sucked. Um, and Billy Gunn kept been frustrated. She kept she kept anytime like uh, anybody would go to pick up Sarah Lee, I believe Gabby was doing it or Georgia. I don't remember when Georgia did it. It looked like she was about to give her a tombstone pile driver, and she could have just dropped it right on her head. And then when uh, Gabby did it, she just didn't trust her. She said that she didn't feel it. And Billy Gunn just eventually goes off on her, says that if you don't want to be here, you can just quit anytime you want. Um, she says that uh, you need to eat. 
either get out of your head or get out of my wind. And she says that she just needs to, you know, get it out of her head. It was just bad. It was embarrassing. I, Amanda said she was embarrassed for Sarah Lee. I agree. That was bad. You sucked. Um, she might even be worse than Eva Marie. But I can't really, but that's might be going a little bit too far. But yeah. Yeah, it was bad. And, uh, yeah, Gabby and Amanda end up working together. Um, they work, they get along really well. Lita gives them credit for actually working together, even though they've had their problems. And Gabby does say that at the end of the day, this is a job. I bet that does happen, too. Even if you don't like somebody in, not just wrestling, but in the, you know, in any work you're doing, you gotta, at the end of the day, you know, uh, do the job. You gotta do the job that you're required to do, so I... I totally agree with that. And uh, the winners for the gir for the girls are Chelsea. She did a pretty good job, which is kind of sad because, you know, they've been kind of been training for a while. Um, but I thought Chelsea did a pretty good job. She seems like she's got this she, in win wise but promo-wise, hell no. Um, and Pat Josh um, wins the thing, but Patrick is kind of being cocky about it, says that uh, I've... He just won most improved. He didn't really win the challenge. I actually liked Patrick, but this week I feel like he's coming off a little bit cocky this week. Um, I do like him, but I feel like he's being a little bit too cocky this week. But that's just how I feel. Okay, so back at the house, all the women are trying to comfort Sarah Lee. Um, she just talks about how it's, you know they ask her if she's having a off day or not. And she says that she just doesn't She's trying to do this. Um, she just doesn't have a gymnastics background or, you know, an acting background like everybody else does. Chelsea even says that you got, we're just trying to poke the bear. We got to get this bear out of you. We, we need to stop this niceness. And Chelsea even says that she is trying to do this. She is trying. And it, they act like this stuff isn't getting to me that Chris Jericho and Billy Gunn's doing. But it is getting to me and I am trying. And she just kind of breaks down and cries. I don't really, like, like, I should feel bad for, but Chris Jericho even said it. When it, when it cuts back live, when Neon even asks, don't you feel bad at all that you made Sarah Lee cry? And Chris Jericho says that I don't feel bad at all. You know, I'm just trying to motivate and trying to get something out of Sarah Lee to prove that she belongs here. And so far, she hasn't done that. Um, and I agree with Chris Jericho there. Then it goes through all the cast, and that was about it. But yeah, Sarah Lee... I think it needs to go. I think, I just, I just, I can't, you know, um, if she gets on the bottom of three again, I think it's time, that's like three strikes right there. I pretty much think that she just doesn't, doesn't have it. You know, I think she needs to do something else or at least get some training, do something because Sarah Lee just isn't working. Alright, so next the judges ask some people to step forward, kind of talk about them. And Paige brings up Sarah Lee. And she says she's not trying to pick on her, but she's just disappointed at this point. She's been tr She saw a picture of Sarah Lee. She looked different from everybody else. She thought she had it, but every time they throw challenges on at her, she just doesn't win it. She sucks at them. She doesn't say that, but that's kind of how she is. And Sarah Lee says that she is different than everybody else. You're not picking on anybody else, but you're picking on me. And I am actually trying, but Paige just doesn't see it. And uh, Chris Jericho even says that he brought the best, uh, tried to bring the best out of him, that, out of her. And uh, yeah. Hulk Hogan even commends her, says that you, you should keep trying. You know, you do have it. You just need to, you know, win it out. And uh, Patrick, he cut... He talks about how Patrick, uh, Hulk Hogan, talks about how Patrick, he didn't like his promo. He didn't stay in character. He liked Mata's promo, or Mata, I forget how to say his name, better, because he stayed in character. Patrick was just going off on the fans, and he even talked about, too, how um, Hulk Hogan um, is, how he contrasts on the 80s between Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan, which made sense. I, I knew he'd, he'd get shit for that. And, um... Patrick says that uh, he doesn't want to just be known as a person that just knows the history of the business. He actually wants to be here, and he actually wants to learn. And Hulk Hogan, um, but they just don't see it. Um, and um, 
Daniel Bryan asked, who did Daniel Bryan ask to step forward? Um, I think he asked, um, I forget who he asked to step forward, but uh, then they get to pick the bottom three. Paige picks Sarah Lee, big shock Dale. Daniel Bryan picks Gabby, just because, you know, when she, she has the entertainment, but she just didn't put it with the promo. She didn't even look at Amanda when she was cutting the promo. And Hulk Hogan picks Kano. Because he didn't like his promo. He thought it was very bland. And uh, then the bottom three get to cut a promo on the person that eliminated them. Gabby just pretty much gives Daniel Bryan a resume. It wasn't much of a promo on him. Tanner just kind of talks about... Pretty much just kisses Hulk Hogan's ass. And then he just doesn't really win it. But then... But Sarah Lee... She needs to stop smiling. That's what Chris Jericho even said. But I thought she got in Paige's face and she said that you're just afraid of me. You always trash me, but if you and I ever got in the win, you wouldn't be able to trash me then. So I liked Sarah Lee's promo on Paige. And now the voting's open. Since technically I didn't watch this show live, I gotta pick my bottom three. Or the one, well, I gotta pick who I want to stay. And I just can't go with Sarah Lee. Like I said, I don't think that, that she has it. Um, so it's between Tano and Gabby. And this is a tough one. Because you have Tanner, and, uh, you know, I just don't really think he's been winning it that much. You know, he's been, he was good at the start, but I feel like he just kind of fell flat this week. Gabby, same thing. I don't know who to go with here. I have to, I guess, go with Tanner. You know, it's a tough one. It's a toss-up. I have to go with Tanner. No, that's a tough one. I can't go with Tanner. That's a tough one. I don't know who I'm going to go with, um. Uh, do I have, like, a coin I can flip? Do I have something? I'll flip. Let me, like, let me find a coin I can flip. Something. I gotta find, I gotta do something about this. Oh, I'm going like that. Uh, I have the top one. Um, I don't know. There's no coins I can really flip. I'll flip the remote, the TV remote. So if it lands on the side with all the buttons on it, I'll go with uh, Gabby, the other side. I'll go with uh, Tano. Oh, wow. I have to do it again because it didn't work. Uh, all right. I got to go with Gabby then because it landed on the side with all the buttons on it. So um, I guess apparently I'm going with uh, Gabby. Yeah, it was just really tough to pick, but I'll go with Gabby to stay. Okay, so now that the... Contestants, Chris Jericho asked the contestants who he thinks um, should go home. And Amanda, um, Chelsea, and Josh all pick Gabby. Uh, then the judges get to decide whether or not they use the save. All of them say no. And uh, Chris Jericho gets right into Sarah Lee's face and tells her that she's not going home. She's staying there. So I was shocked about I actually... They didn't want Sarah Lee to stay. I guess that promo really impressed her. It was one promo, though. Damn. And Gabby ends up going home, which I am fine with because I... It was really tough to pick. I only picked Gabby because, you know, I flipped, well, the remote. I was going to flip a coin, but I flipped the remote. And Renee Yan interviews Gabby, and Gabby says that she's happy to go home because she's not here to, in wrestling to get fights. She wants to learn how to do this. And she picks Sarah Lee to win. She does feel like she does have it, even though she doesn't have personality. Renee Young got a weird look on her face, which I completely agree with, because Gabby's not very good at cutting promos and stuff like that. But uh, that was this week's episode of Tough Enough. Um, I did like this episode. I liked the uh, promos wars. I liked, you know, the struggle with Sarah Lee, even though she sucks. I did like this week's episode, though. I thought it was pretty good. I thought Chris Jericho... Had Finally had more of a purpose on the show. He didn't just stand around and do nothing. So maybe, hopefully, this becomes a recurring thing. But I did like this week's episode. Um, it was pretty good to watch. But that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, just to tell you, this actually isn't my 900th video. That's going to be the next video following this. I'm going to upload my 900th video right after this video uploads. But that's pretty much it, guys. You can uh, click up there to subscribe to my own The Talkinator channel where we talk about non-wrestling fans. And then down below to check. Check out my CM Brothers channel where we talk about both. That's pretty much it, guys. You can click down below right there to subscribe to me. And that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.